Today we're going to be talking about how to find the area between the given curves. So we have the three curves y equals e to the x, y equals x e to the x, and the line x equals zero. We're going to have to do a few steps in order to figure this out, and the first thing we need to do is figure out where these curves intersect one another. The way that we'll do that is by setting them equal to each other. So obviously we have two curves that are set equal to y, which means that we can set e to the x and x e to the x equal to one another and then solve for x. So what we'll do is we'll say e to the x is equal to x e to the x. And now we want to go ahead and solve this for x. Well, what we should immediately realize is that we have e to the x here on both sides with just the right side being multiplied by x. Since we have e to the x equal to each other, the only possible value that x can be, where this statement here is true, is one, right? Because if x is one, then e to the x and e to the x, right, are equal to each other. If x is anything but one, then this equation is false. So we need to say that x is equal to one, and we know that that's an intersection point of these two curves. Now that we have an intersection point, we can go ahead and try to draw a picture of what it is that we're really talking about right here. We know that we're trying to find the area between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So if I draw a picture here of our graph, we're asked to find the area between these curves, and we already know that it's going to be bounded by the line x equals 0, but since we found this intersection point, we also know it's going to be bounded by the line x equals 1. So we can go ahead and plot this, right, x equals 0 here between this line, and we'll go ahead and call this here x equals 1, right, here's this line, and then we have these two curves, and since they're curves y in terms of x, we know that they may look something roughly like this, let's say, and they're going to intersect each other at x equals 1 because we just found that here. So let's say we have the curves like this, they, they look like this roughly, and they intersect each other at x equals 1. So we have this line here, x equals 0, that we've told is a boundary for our area region, and then we know that there's an intersection point of 1, so that automatically becomes a boundary point, and we're going to be looking for the area inside this shape here. So all we need to do now is figure out which of these two curves, y equals e to the x or y equals x e to the x, is the higher curve and which one is the lower curve. So which one basically is on top. And the way that we can do that, the easiest way, uh, in this case it's easy and we can, we can look at it and know, but sometimes it'll be hard to tell just from the equations. You can always plug in a point between 0 and 1 into both curves and see which one is higher. So for example, we know we have the range here 0 to 1. If we plug in 0.5 or 1 half to both of these, we're going to get an answer for each. Whichever one is higher, we know, is the higher curve. But in this case, we can do it really without a calculator because imagine if we plug in 0.5 or 1 half to each of these. So whatever it is, e to the, e to the 0.5 and e to the 0.5, that's going to be equal to each other in both of these curves. But the second curve here, we're going to multiply by 0.5 again. So let's say, for example, if we plug in 0.5 for x and e to the 0.5 is, let's say, 1.5. So if e to the 0.5 is equal to 1.5, and I don't know what it is, but let's say it's 1.5. For this curve, we're going to get e to the 0.5 is 1.5, but then we're going to be multiplying that by 0.5 which we automatically know is equal to 0.75. So this curve, we get a value that is half what this one is. So we automatically know that y equals e to the x is going to be the higher curve. So this is e to the x, and this is going to be x e to the x. And for any value between 0 and 1, we know that that's going to hold. So now that we know that e to the x is above x e to the x, we can go ahead and proceed with our area calculation. So our area calculation is always this. It's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 because those are our boundaries here, right? We're going to be integrating from 0 to 1. 
and we want to then take the higher curve, so e to the x, and subtract from that the lower curve, so x, e to the x, dx, and that's the integral we have to calculate. If we calculate this integral of the higher curve minus the lower curve between this left and right boundary, then we'll get the area inside of here, which is what we've been asked to find, the area between these curves on this range here, 0 to 1. In order to calculate this integral, let's go ahead and split it up first into two integrals. So we'll say the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x dx minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x e to the x dx. So hopefully that'll make it easier to calculate. We know that the integral of e to the x is just the exact same thing, e to the x, so that one's easy to find. But this one over here, x e to the x, we have the product of two functions, and in order to take the integral here, we're going to need to use integration by parts. So if you need to brush up on integration by parts, I've got lots of videos about it on my website and on YouTube, and you can look those up. But for now, we're going to go through it a little bit quickly. So for integration by parts, we're going to set u equal to x. We're going to take the derivative of that to get du, and of course, we'll just get 1 times dx, so we'll get du equals dx. We're going to set dv equal to e to the x dx, and then we're going to take the integral of that to get v. The integral of e to the x is simply e to the x, so now we have the components we need to plug into our integration by parts formula. So let's uh, work through this one step at a time. This first integral is going to be, the, the integral of e to the x is e to the x, so we'll get e to the x, and we're going to be evaluating that on the range 0 to 1. So this integral here is now done. Now we've got minus, and for this integral we have to apply our integration by parts formula with the components that we just found. So remember that our integration by parts formula is u times v, so we'll get x times e to the x minus the integral of v times du. So the integral of v times du. So v is e to the x, du is dx, so we get e to the x dx. Now remember that when you have a definite integral, it's really important that you evaluate both of these on the range of your original integral, so 0 to 1. We'll go ahead and put that here and then distribute it among each of these components in a second. So we have e to the x on the range 0 to 1, so e to the x from 0 to 1, and then we'll get minus x e to the x, so x e to the x, that's going to be on the range 0 to 1 as well, 0 to 1. Then we have a negative sign and a negative sign, so we'll get plus, and now we have the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x dx. e to the x dx, the integral of that is just e to the x as we know, so we'll get e to the x on the range 0 to 1 minus x e to the x on 0 to 1. Now we have plus e to the x on 0 to 1. Now we can go ahead and plug in 1 and 0. So whenever we have, whenever we're evaluating a definite integral like this, remember you always plug in the top number first and then subtract what you get when you plug in the bottom number. So we'll have here e to the 1 minus what we get when we plug in the bottom number, so e to the 0. Now we have a minus here for this second term. We're going to plug in 1, and we'll get 1 times e to the 1 minus 0 e to the 0 plus, and now we're on our third term, plugging in the top term first, the top number first, and then the bottom number. So we'll get e to the 1 minus e to the 0. And now we just need to simplify. So e to the 1, of course, is just e. e to the 0 is 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So we get minus 1. This term here, of course, will cancel because it's multiplied by 0. This first one here, 1e one e to the 1, will just get minus e because we have this negative sign here, so minus e. And then we have plus e to the 1, so plus e, and then minus e to the 0, so minus 1. Now we can get some more things to cancel. We have e minus e. Those are going to go away. We're just now left with this single e here 
and then minus one and minus one gives us a minus two, and that's it, that's our answer. So E minus two is how we define the area between these two curves, e to the x and x e to the x, on the range 0 to 1. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.